Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is healthcare startup accelerators and incubators. So, because we're talking about healthcare startups, I, of course, have to wear a hoodie. I did this before when I talked about startups, because, of course, people who start startups wear hoodies. But on A Healthcare Z, we also have to keep it real, so we got the tie underneath as well. All right, so. What in the world is a healthcare startup accelerator and an incubator? So it itself is a business, or in the case of a lot of incubators, sometimes they're nonprofit organizations, sometimes affiliated with universities, that help startups. They help startups by providing space, like office space, mentorship, classes, networking, and all, oftentimes they include deadlines and supervision. Now. For a startup to be a part of an accelerator or an incubator, it's a selective process where the, you know, the small company, it might have two or three founders, they have to go through an application process. And probably the most famous uh, accelerator in America is Y Combinator. Now, it's not healthcare specific, it's generally technology. Now, they do have healthcare technology firms that have been a part of Y Combinator, but Y Combinator is super selective. It only accepts 2% of the applicants. So typically they'll have like classes. They'll have like a cohort, like every six months or a year, they'll have a cohort come in and they only, uh, only accept 2%. So it's super selective. Now, what's the difference between an accelerator and an incubator? Well, one of the key differences is that the accelerator actually invests in the startup itself. And oftentimes they'll provide an investment of anywhere from $30,000 to $500,000 or some amount in between. And the incubator will allow for the space and the mentorship and all that stuff, but they typically don't actually invest in the company. And so that's why the accelerator, I mean, it's an actual business because in exchange for the investment, then the business, the accelerator, is getting equity such that when the startup has an exit and is acquired or maybe has an IPO or what have you, then the, the accelerator, the business, that's one way that it makes money. Now, oftentimes the accelerators will also help with um, connections to further on investment from venture capitalists. For example, for Y Combinator, it's such a famous uh, startup accelerator that the venture capitalists, they just like line up and they kind of crawl over each other to try to gain access to these Y Combinator startups because companies like Airbnb started with Y Combinator. So they've had some huge, and Stripe, they've had some huge exits um, from their accelerator. Now, Let's specifically talk about healthcare accelerators. Okay, so one of some of the more well-known ones are Rock Health out in the San Francisco Bay Area and Startup Health, which is in New York City. And then here in Dallas, where I'm located, we have Healthcare Wildcatters. Now, for those of you who don't know, Wildcatter is, a, is an oil drilling term. It's for the, the, the roughnecks that would go out and drill oil wells, just sort of exploring for oil where they didn't know if there was any or not. So a Wildcatter is sort of like an entrepreneur equivalent uh, in the oil business. And so, that, and so obviously that's why they called it Healthcare Wildcatters uh, here in Dallas. Now, who should use a healthcare accelerator? Well, I will tell you that when we started Compass, we needed all this stuff. And we didn't have any accelerators uh, at the time in Dallas. We needed space, we needed mentors. We, I, I used a ton of YouTube classes. Um, we needed networking, we needed, we needed deadlines. So we needed all this stuff. We kind of cobbled it together ourselves. We had super cheap office space and frankly a dangerous part of Dallas. I was able to connect with this big time uh, corporate uh, telephone IVR salesman. He was hugely instrumental in teaching me how to do corporate sales. Okay, like we watched God, we read, read blogs and watched YouTube videos and we had basically had to be autodidacts and teaching ourselves all about, you know, how in the world to start and run this business. Okay, we had to, I went to gazillions of events just trying to meet every single person I possibly could meet. Okay, and then we actually had a board too that would give us deadlines for stuff. Okay, so you need all this stuff. I'm not saying you don't need all this stuff. All this stuff that accelerators and incubators provide, it's hugely important. Okay, now, so who would use an accelerator? Well, if you don't have any money, 
And if you don't have any connections, then in my opinion, the accelerator is key. Now we all started, the three founders of Compass, we started our company when we were about 30. And so by the age of 30, we actually had some personal connections. So we had some access to some very early investors and we only raised about, you know, in between 30 and $500,000. So it was about the same amount of money that an accelerator would do. And we also, because we were 30, we at least had been out of college for a while and we had some connections out in the real world, okay? So what does that mean? If you don't have any money and you don't have any connections, that typically means like you're in your 20s or early 30s and there are potentially some fantastic healthcare entrepreneurs who are frankly just young. And so like if I was in my 20s and I wanted to do software or tech enabled services, especially in the employer sponsored market, then I think an accelerator or an incubator could be hugely helpful. OK, you know, because at a very basic level, you don't have any money and you don't have any connections. And of all the things up here, what you need is money and connections, because without that, no matter what your idea is, it's going to fail. OK, now. Let me kind of specifically, again, relate this to healthcare in that, look, these uh, accelerators and incubators, like they could do um, medical device, they could do, you know, pharma, but obviously my area of experience and expertise and a lot of the folks that you, that are watching, you're interested more in software and tech enabled services specifically for the employer sponsored insurance market. And so in that there's a huge opportunity for digital health companies in that space. And you kind of have a fork in the road and that fork in the road is either to go big and probably the poster child of going big was Lavongo. Now, Lavongo raised $232 million across eight rounds. And the only way that you're going to be able to go big from the very beginning with a healthcare startup is if you've been around the block and you've got connections. So their, their founder used to be the CEO of a big healthcare company. And so they were able to go out and actually raise venture capital because they knew people and they were go, able to go out and like get big customers because they had raised a lot of money and they knew a lot of people. And so they were able to go big. And listen, they raised a lot of money. They also had a huge exit. They went public and then they were ultimately bought by Teladoc for $18.5 billion. I mean, from a financial standpoint, it was hugely successful. Now, not every healthcare startup has to go that way. The other fork in the road is to go small. And that's really what these accelerators are doing, right? I mean, uh, the Health Wildcatters had a company called Metabook Metabooker that was a somewhat in a similar vein to what we did at Compass that in addition to the uh, initial investment from the healthcare, uh, from the Health Wildcatters, they had a total of 3.3 million in investment and they ended up exiting within five years. It was for an undisclosed amount, but it was to a local Dallas company. And listen, that could have been hugely successful for the founders and the employees of Metabooker on just a much smaller scale. But it was still a huge success over a relatively short period of time. They probably maintained a whole bunch of their equity, so they were able to get a, a bigger chunk of that exit uh, price. Okay, so you don't, if you don't know anybody, like you don't have to go big. You can go small. Now, the other thing that I will say that is super helpful for healthcare startups is not only the accelerator, but it is the location of the contacts. It is the location of the network because you need to get customers. And getting customers, especially in the beginning, is all about who you know. Like it's not gonna be based upon your solution and value proposition and blah, blah, blah. Basically, you're gonna have to like have a friend of a friend of a friend who like is the CEO of a company and like they're just gonna do whatever your solution is, right? You're not gonna go through HR because no HR person on the planet is gonna hire some startup with like, you know, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars and three people. Like they, like, what if it fails? They're going to get fired, right? So you got to go straight to the business owner, likely of a small or medium-sized business. And the only way the business owner of that small or medium-sized business is going to go with your little startup is if you've got a connection. Okay, so you've got to have connections. And those connections are very helpful in the South and the Midwest. And why is this? It's because, in general, this is a generality here, 
Companies in the Midwest and the South tend to be lower margin businesses. Why is that? Because when you think about high margin businesses in America, you're thinking about non-tech, non-biotech, non-finance, non-like Hollywood entertainment businesses, right? So the Northeast is filled with finance and technology and biotech companies and all these companies have super high margins. And then the West Coast obviously has all these technology companies. Their margins are so high that frankly, employee health care is really not a priority for them. But for lower margin businesses, and we've already talked about the industries, things like manufacturing, which tends to be in the Midwest and South, which tend to be like transportation, like trucking companies, okay? Those companies, they tend to be in the Midwest and South, and there's gobs of like small and medium-sized businesses in those places as well. So if you can put together the combination of the accelerator services and financing plus the network to the Midwest and the South to gain access to customers, then in my opinion, that's the best way to leverage a healthcare startup accelerator and incubator. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.